Hello, welcome. This is John Kutz here with Tech First Draft. Indoor air quality is often worse than outdoor air quality, and most people don't know that. With recent fire seasons, outdoor can be horrific, and that can come indoors as well. I live in Vancouver, BC, and we've had forest fires in British Columbia. I know the people in Seattle have had that, and California had that really, really bad this past summer as well. Now, of course, we're seeing Australia and the horrific conditions that they're going through, and that's all coming into our homes. So indoor systems to diagnose air quality, they're getting more common. I actually have three in my house because I've been testing a bunch of them right now. And one of them even told me that my furnace was leaking uh, CO2 or carbon monoxide, actually. So those are getting more common. But how do you fix the problems? So I want to introduce my guest. My guest is Christoph Burkhard. He's the CEO of One Life, and they've developed a revolutionary new air purifier that they're releasing next week in CES at Las Vegas. So we're getting a sneak peek. Welcome, Christoph. Thanks so much for having us. Excellent. Pleasure to have you. Talk to me a little bit. What are the worst problems with indoor air? So most people don't realize how bad the air inside really is. And if you look at the numbers and you mentioned the sensors that are available now everywhere, um, you get a feeling for especially fine dust particles being more prevalent inside than outside, five times to 10 times more fine dust inside than outside. So if you talk about the fires, um, most of the stuff that you can't see that is the most harmful for your bodies uh, that, that basically you are filtering that air um, right now. So you're breathing in all these pollutants and particles and your body, they're, they're so small, they stay in your bloodstreams and they cause real damage. So most people don't realize how bad this problem really is because you can't really see it. You know, it's less obvious than food or water. So kind of interesting. What you're saying is that if you don't have an air filtration system, you are the air filtration system. That is pretty much what's happening right now in most places um, around the around the globe. If you don't have an air purifier, you are the filter, basically. Yeah, that is a scary thought. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the percentage of people who even know that they might have a problem. So I mentioned off the top that these devices are getting more common to diagnose what the problems are with your air, how much CO2 is in them, how much particulate fine matter is in is in the air that you're breathing. Uh, how, what percentage of households do you think maybe in North America, Europe, other places around the world might even have those sensors? So I, I would say that this really depends on where you are. So obviously we see uh, all over Asia, people have um, seen this problem more obviously um, so they are more aware of it. Interesting. Um, so when you go to places like Bangkok, um, people have have sensors to tell them whether to whether it's safe to do sports outside or not. And that's pretty much 90% of all people. So they know and they're very aware and they also know what filter to buy. Um, so they, they're a little step ahead of the US and then Europe is obviously last. Um, but the problem yeah, the, the problem is very widespread. And you also have the problem that um, all the pollutants that you just mentioned, they don't stay in one place, but they travel. So especially the, the pollutants from the fire, even though you don't live close to them, um, they travel really far and the, the fine dust particles stay in the air for a long time. So even if you think you're safe, uh, you might not be safe. And the sensor technology, since it's becoming cheaper and cheaper, more and more people have sensors. And that's a good thing um, because they see, as you said, you see things uh, out of a sudden, they were invisible before, and now you become aware, and now you go the next step, and you take care of the air you're breathing. Super interesting. I did not know that the filters, the the detection capability was more common in Asia. Uh, I, I totally get the logic there. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, interesting to your point about uh, it doesn't matter where the pollution is being created. It's coming to you. Uh, I saw the news this morning. You may have seen it as well. That New Zealand, the snow, the glaciers in New Zealand are turning brown with the dust and smoke and ash of the forest fires, bushfires in Australia. Uh, yeah. It's a global planet. Exactly, exactly. And we, we don't know that much about these movements. So we, even uh, plastic particles, you find them sometimes in Antarctica, where there is absolutely no one using plastic, but they travel really far. And those, those are kind of big particles. And we're talking about the fine dust particles at PM1. That's the smallest level we can detect right now. What, what exactly? T talk to me about this, the size of a PM1 particle uh, what does that what, can, relate that to something that people can understand and and tell me what the, the 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 health issues are of even pm1 particles 
So when you see light coming th through a, a window into your room, I mean, you see the particles in the air sometimes dance around. So those are particles PM10 or bigger. And then we go Whoa. down to PM2.5. Right now, regulation worldwide is around PM10 to PM2.5. So they get smaller, the smaller the number gets. And most sensors don't detect PM1 right now, which is this, that's why we use a sensor in there that measures the PM1 level, because these are so fine. They're 100 times smaller than your hair. So this is there's nothing you can see while they travel through the air. But you uh, breathe them, you, you're still breathing them in, uh, and they stay in your body, as I said. Um, and this is, this is a real issue. So that's really interesting. I mentioned I have three different air quality sensors in my house mm -hmm. right now. I'm pretty sure that the smallest particle that any of them can detect is 2.5 PM 2.5. Um, and so you're telling me that there's smaller particles there that also have health issues and, and you're able to not only detect them, but remove them. Yes. It's pretty much only because we can measure them that we can show that we can <laughs> remove them. Um, yes. I mean, you can't you can't really trust an air purifier that doesn't have sensors to showcase what they actually do to the air. Um, so we need that, and especially we're looking for fully automatic systems, so they need to know what's in the air to get it out. Um, smart, yeah. smart, makes sense. So there's a lot of existing air purifiers out there. Um, I've looked at a Dyson. I've looked at a few others as well. And and talk to me about some of the challenges and problems that you see when you that you saw when you were designing your solution. Yeah, so it pretty much the, the the problem has different dimensions that we were looking at. So uh, one challenge is that the technology is pretty um, old. That's the most common. So th they use a, a HEPA filter technology um, that is basically a very fine knit net. Um, and you push a lot of air through and the particles remain in the net. Um, and this is great. The problem is you need a lot of electricity to push air through. Um, and the finer the the filter, the better the filter is, the more electricity you need because the ventilators have to go at really high speeds, meaning this is um, actually making a lot of noise, um, which makes it a problem if you want to run it at night. Um, that's something that was really important to us. We wanted to put the thing right next to our bed and then sleep fresh through fresh air. Pretty much that, that was a goal. Um, and then the other thing was obviously we wanted to be as green as possible. So low ventilator speed was one of the main issues that we wanted to solve. And we kind of saw, okay, this is the one type of technology that's the most common. And the market for that kind of purifier is going to double within the next five years. Um, but the other thing is if you don't want to use a filter system, you use um, 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 an e-filter that charges particles and then they fly towards um, a capture wall. Um, so they, they stick basically uh, to the walls. And for that, you obviously need less air to be pushed. And that's why they're quiet. The problem is that these e-filters produce a lot of ozone. And the best performing ones are obviously the ones that produce the most ozone. So unfortunately, if you use them in a room, and hotels will why do that. So once, once there's someone in the room that was smoking and was not supposed to, they have to put those filters in, the, those purifiers in overnight. Uh, produce the ozone, but no one can be in the room while they're running because of the ozone. And then uh, they have to open the windows the next day. So that's obviously not a good solution. So ozone is good in the ozone layer, not so good in your air? No, nah, you don't want that in your air, uh, especially not at high levels. I mean, there's a little bit of ozone is everywhere, and that's not a problem, but you don't want to increase the ozone in the room. That's what we wanted to do. Super interesting. So, I mean, it's interest. One of the reasons why we haven't, uh, my wife and I haven't sprung for an air filter is we're looking at what is the lifetime cost of an air filter. It's not just yeah. the one time cost of something, but I know companies always want to build a business model that uh, they don't get paid for once. They get paid for, you know, in, infinity number of times, as long as you use the product. And I understand that from a from business point of pers uh, perspective, from a consumer perspective, I want to buy thing, want something once and it just keeps giving me value more and more. And so re replaceable filters is one reason we haven't actually done that. Talk to me about um, what that, uh, how, how much that can cost and, 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 and how you see that as a barrier in people buying an air purifier. Yeah. So, um, buying the air purifier in the beginning is one big chunk of that's that's they're not cheap so if, especially if you want to get a good one if you look at the market leaders you're always between 300 and then they go all the way up to six thousand um, dollars but then the, the replacement of the filters um, that gets really expensive over time 
Um, so that's that you, you have to buy them every six months, uh, you replace them. And as you said, this is a good business model because they cost between 100 and $300 to replace them. Uh, and that's twice a year. Um, so they add another layer of cost. Um, and of course, for us, even the bigger problem is that that is a lot of waste you're creating. Um, so yes. pretty much you're collecting all the dust from the air, it sticks to the filters, then you have to replace the filters. And then paradoxically, what happens is they have to burn the filters. Wow. Right? So all the stuff in there goes back in the air. So that was obviously a problem that we saw, we thought that that can't be a good solution to the problem. Um, so we wanted a filter that you don't have to replace at all. Um, so we developed one that actually goes into the dishwasher. You still have to clean it, obviously, because you're capturing dust. And after a while, it won't collect that much dust anymore. But it's yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the Dyson because we actually tried to do exactly what the Dyson did at the time to the vacuum cleaners. Mm -hmm. right? They wanted to get rid of the filter bag um, and said, we want to do that without because there, you need so much pressure for yes. that. And you lose so much energy. And what, what they did for the vacuum cleaner is what we do now for the purifier. So you don't have to replace the thing um, and you just clean it yourself. Super interesting. Um, talk to me about the technology that you're using to, to capture and filter the dust. Yeah, so we're creating, um, uh, I mean, these. I, I'm not the engineer on the team, but I, I, these guys are incredible. So they developed a plasma filter technology. We create a very small plasma um, field, which the particles fly through. And it's similar to an e-filter technology, but without the ozone. Um, so they get charged and the particles stick to uh, different plates that we put up. Um, and the plates have, there's, there's a lot of space between them. That's why the air flies just through. And that's why we don't produce any noise. Um, and also we're super energy efficient because we don't really need the ventilators to run at high speeds. Um, so that's that's the main part. And that filter you just take out um, to, to wash. And it's all um, very easy to clean. Um, yeah, so the, the plasma field that you create around uh, a string, and I obviously can't tell you all the details yet, but yeah. um, you will get one when we have one, and then you'll <laughs> see it inside. Um, but we create these plasma fields, about three of them at the bottom, and then the air flies through three ventilators at the bottom. The air goes from the, from the bottom through the top of the machine, comes out clean at the top, um, and then that is clean air. So plasma, I'm familiar with plasma on the surface of the sun or in, in a star or something like that. That's pretty hot stuff, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, we do it at a very, very tiny uh, level. And yes. it's this corona uh, that you think this is, this is it looks like a, a light bulb. Yes. But it's, it's very low uh, energy that you use really to create that plasma field. Because Excellent. we're talking about particles that are super small. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so in some of the press photos that I've seen of the device, and I look forward to seeing it in person as well, um, it doesn't, I don't see a wire. Um, is this wireless? So you have a battery in there that it can just run and charge up or is, uh, does it have to be plugged in? It, at this point, it still has to be plugged in. We're, we're lowering the energy we need basically every day, but we still wanted um, a boost mode. That means if you see from your other sensors, whatever shows you that the air is bad in your room, we wanted the boost mode um, that actually um, is able to, within 10, 15 minutes, clear out your room, no matter how bad the air is in there. And for that, you need more electricity than the um, the battery could provide. Interesting. And so I see that it looks like, because uh, I've seen it in relation to a desk or a chair or something like that, it's a fairly significantly sized object. It's, it's, it's very well designed. It looks amazing, I'm sure, in many homes, mm -hmm. modern architecture, uh, design, clean lines. But the size, what kind of home can it deal with and how, uh, how many do you need? Let's say if you have a typical North American home or European home that might be uh, 2,500 square feet or, or, or you know, 400 square meters or something like that, how many do you need? So if uh, it more depends on how bad the air is where you live. Um, mm -hmm. That's why we measure all the time. Our app shows you the outside air and the indoor air at the same time. Oh. So you get the comparison. And then that way we already know how to adjust the machine. But we can easily filter air um, in a building up to 1,000 square feet. Um, if you live on different levels, then it might become difficult be unless you leave your doors open at all times. Mm -hmm. If you really put one thing in the middle of your home, it will clear the air. It just takes longer. Yes. So the, the clean air delivery rate, which is the indicator we use to compare your purifiers, um, is 
is great for any kind of building. Um, it just takes more time if you want to clear it out. So the more people are obviously living there and the more the doors move and the air moves, uh, the more purifiers you would actually have. So if you live in an office building, if you want to do this in an office building, you would probably need more um, if you go at 20, 2,500 feet. That's yes. Great. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Okay, cool. And, and then maybe we'll end here unless there's a few other things to talk about, but talk to me about the impact of poor quality air just on your health. Um, I can understand there'd be long-term health consequences. You're breathing in particulate matter, that sort of thing. Uh, but also on your performance. Yes. Um, so obviously this has uh, a huge impact on office life as well as just uh, the health at home. Obviously, it will protect your kids. Um, but if you think about kindergartens or schools, they usually don't have air purification yet. And we spend a lot of time there. So obviously, where, where, wherever people spend a lot of time working, uh, thinking, um, and, and not moving a lot, uh, there, the, the purifier would do a really great job um, boosting the, the performance uh, and boosting health. Uh, because uh, we know that the impact is incredible. So from the studies, there, there's a uh, performance increase. Just putting an air purifier in an office uh, setting increases performance by about 16% measured in productivity. Um, so that's that's the productivity part and the performance part. Obviously, um, athletes always work out and train when they work, work out inside, indoors. Uh, they always work with air, purified air because that's really dangerous um, to not do that. But So if you think about uh, a cycling studio, um, if you think about any gym, um, if they don't have purified air, this is at your, because you're breathing more, this is more harmful for you to breathe in all these particles. Yes. So in new locations, it would definitely make sense to think about purification like that. That uh, is interesting. I, I'm in San Francisco quite frequently and there's soul cycle there and they, exactly. they put about 60 people in this room the size of my living room and you are working hard i mean i burned 600 calories in an hour right so yeah. I'm just, that, that's hard workout and I, yeah. I hope that air was clean yeah i hope so too and the problem is that people like you show up with their sensors and we'll show them one day yeah that's true yeah. i actually have four sensors in my house because i have a mobile sensor it's crazy i know yeah. um interesting what have i not asked and what else do you want to say um it's I think we have a great opportunity here um, and I, I hope we can push and this is really what the company stands for or wants to stand for. This is our mission is not only to help with the health and productivity, but I think we need to shift a little bit the perspective that technologies that we're seeing now in the next decade, they're not only there to solve a problem, but they need to be way more efficient at doing what other systems do. So not not only thinking about the, the convenience or the effective yeah, the effectiveness of the technology, but thinking about what can we reduce in the capacity and resources it requires to get to clean air. And then use the same principles to ask for clean water. And actually, this is what we're looking for right now is allies in all over technology who say, yes, we want to do clean tech, green tech that reaches the same level of performance that our competitors do. Uh, and this is, this is a real good challenge, I think, to put in front of engineers of the next generation. Wonderful. Engineers are critical to the next generation as we uh, approach all the challenges of climate change and other things like that, automation yeah. coming out and other things like that. So thank you for that. Thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you for joining us all who are listening on Tech First Draft. Whatever platform you're on, please like, subscribe, share or comment. And if you're on the podcast later on listening to this, you like it, please rate it and review it. Thanks again, Christoph. Really a pleasure to have you. And until next time, this is John Kutz here with Tech First Draft. Thanks so much.